WCBI News at 10 starts now. Starkville and Octobah County schools will become one starting in 2015, but nobody ever said that merging two school districts was going to be easy. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us. I'm Andrew Harrison. And I'm Michelle Lowe. Parents in Starkville and Octobah County are getting a good idea of the obstacles that are sure to come in the future. Today, they made their voices heard at a public hearing in Starkville. WCBI's Jennifer Ortega was there and has the story. Parents who packed the Greensboro Auditorium had plenty to say. My biggest concern is just the, the how this is going to happen, the, the logistics of getting everybody in the entire county to, on, on, on the same page. I also believe firmly that no matter where the children live in, whether they're in the Starkville School District or out, they all deserve the same education opportunities that we have. While the Consolidation Commission focused on buildings, finances for both districts, and funding, some parents were worried about keeping the public school system attractive to those who come to work at the university or Starkville in general. My hope for all the children in Octippaha County and the city of Starkville is that they get the same opportunities that my girls did and that people who come to Mississippi State will be attracted by the strength of our public school system because I think that there's a real connection there. The commission and some visiting state lawmakers got an earful from the public. Now they must weigh those ideas and concerns and decide the best course of action moving forward. If you have good schools, you're going to have good economic development. Uh, you have Yokohama up the uh, road here at Clay County. You'll have more of that if, if businesses come in here and say, hey, they've got a great school system, they've got an educated workforce. If you want to make improve your earnings, you want to bring more jobs to the community, education is the way to do it, and this is an effort to do that. In Starkville, Jennifer Ortega, WCBI News. Now the commission meets again in two weeks. While Starkville and Octomaha County officials are figuring out how to come together, the Tupelo Public School District is celebrating strong gains in state test scoring. Last spring, elementary students took parts of the Mississippi curriculum test, and now those scores are out. The majority of students were able to show that they were proficient in language, arts, and math. Superintendent Dr. Gerald Logan says the positive results are a team effort. Health insurance is going up for city employees. City leaders passed a 2% increase, which amounts to $1.50 per pay period. Now, that is the city of Tupelo there. The city has agreed, I'm sorry, the city of Columbus has agreed to absorb the cost of the other $40,000 it will cost to keep employees covered. United Healthcare raised their rate, citing an increase in illnesses during the year. Based on the claims experience thus far in the fiscal period, we're tra tracking about $80,000 over budget um, in claims. Now, this is through July. That figure could change. I mean, I would hope that the employees can understand because it's no more than uh, a little over a dollar per pay period because in the past when there have been increases for the last three or four years, in the health insurance package, uh, the city have absorbed the increases. Columbus Mayor Robert Smith says it will not cost taxpayers anything. Columbus has flexibility in its budget to cover the costs. Meanwhile, the Columbus Fire Department will also have to revamp its use of overtime. In a 5-2 to two vote, the city has decided to reduce the department's overtime budget. Now, the cuts will take more than $100,000 away from the fire department's overtime fund. Mayor Robert Smith says federal law already requires the city to allocate funds for overtime. Councilman Gene Taylor, who voted yes, says the decision was a must to balance out the budget. Councilman Joseph Mickens, the only one to vote no, says it takes away from the fire department's progress. We reached out to Columbus Fire Chief Ken Moore. He declined to comment. Tonight, Congressman Alan Nunley addressed a standing room only town hall crowd at the Lowndes County Courthouse. Congressman answered questions from his constituents on topics that included repealing Obamacare, eliminating agencies like the IRS and NSA, as well as illegal immigration. Congressman says he understands the frustrations of Mississippians and will continue to do what's in their best interest when he returns to Washington, D.C. I think our focus needs to continue to be on job creation uh, and opportunities for the people of Mississippi. You know, governments don't create jobs, but government can create an environment where businesses can grow and thrive and create jobs. Not only will continue to meet with his constituents over the next two weeks. 
Tonight's first look at weather is brought to you by Alpha Insurance. Call Alpha agent Chris Ballard in Starkville for all your insurance needs. Well, we have been tracking some showers and thunder showers up here across Union County, Pontotoc County and Lee County. A lot of lightning in this earlier. It is falling apart right now as expected and it shouldn't be with us too much more in the future, but we still have a little bit of rain out there. Tomorrow, our Friday, we're back in the low 90s. A few more pop up showers and storms possible during the afternoon heating. Let's hope for the best by tomorrow evening for those high school football games. I'll have your full forecast coming up. All right, thank you very much, Keith. Hamilton resi residents that is, are getting frustrated with the safety at one railroad crossing. An accident this afternoon between a train and a Chevy Malibu has residents looking for more safety precautions. 50 year old Jesse Thomas stalled out on the tracks and was struck on the rear end of his vehicle by a train. He was transported to Baptist Memorial in Golden Triangle here in Columbus with non life threatening injuries. But residents say the crossing at Stovall Road is dangerous and needs flashing lights and crossing arms. Plans for the Yokohama Tire Plant are rolling right along. Construction phase set to begin in early September. They're also looking for contracts for dirt work at that plant site. Link CEO Joe Max Higgins says those interested in applying for supplier vendor jobs can go ahead and get a jump start on the Mississippi Yokohama website. Well, with all the construction workers in the area, Columbus Man has made a career out of keeping their shoes or boots in top shape. Work boots have become Tommy Coggins' specialty, but as footwear evolved, Coggins was forced to sell more boots than he actually repairs. Coggins plans to close up his shop come November and enjoy his retirement. Well, the Department of Environmental Quality says Pontotoc Lake needs to be lowered because if its levels need to be in full compliance with state regulations. Now, residents are not happy that the lake is going to be lowered, but the DEQ says the primary purpose of that lake is for flood control. Recreational use is secondary.